Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for the Battery Insiders podcast. Here live from India, we're currently at the India Battery Show, um, not too far from New Delhi. And yeah, we have some really interesting conversations here. We just had a really interesting CEO conclave meeting. A lot of CEOs coming together around the battery space, discussing some of the latest developments and some of the biggest questions in the field. And I'm extremely delighted to have Uday Narang with me, who is the founder of Omega Psyche Mobility. I think he has a really interesting perspective. He's quite outspoken. So I think we are going to get some interesting insights, especially on the electric vehicle market, also in the commercial space, also the aspects of two and three wheelers, and also really how is to bring, as you mentioned, about 50,000 vehicles on the road. And even beyond that, I think you have a personal interesting story as well, a bit of an interesting background moving into this field. So maybe if you could just quickly introduce yourself, what brings you to this topic, what brought you back, or what brought you here to India to really um, push this field? Sure. Uh, first of all, really great to be here. Um, and, you know, it's really amazing to be here and see all the global players. You know, India's time has arrived. What, what makes me feel excited is that, um, you know, when all the international players come here, and especially on EV and, you know, green energy and sustainability. My name is Uday Narang. I'm the uh, founder of Omega Seki Mobility. I'm an ex hedge fund manager. I spent 30 years in US, Europe. Uh, at one time, I was one of the larger commodity traders in the world uh, and on the, on the London Metal Exchange. So I've gone from a guy um, who was an oil and a commodity guy uh, about nine years ago, sitting in my headquarters in Mount Street in London, which is called Hedge Fund Alley, saying I want to make a difference. And how do I want to make a difference? I want to make the world cleaner and greener. And how do we make a good world cleaner and greener? Let's come back to the third world, come back to India, come back to Africa, come back to ASEAN. This is where um, the future front lines of green energy sustainability are to be fought uh, in the United States, Europe. Um, you know, my home's in Zug in Switzerland, uh, you know, one of the most beautiful places on the planet. And here I am uh, now in Delhi, in Mumbai, in Chennai, in Bangalore, where uh, green energy sustainability needs to be the number one agenda. If we want a future country, we, I'm a big, um, you know, I, I love what uh, Prime Minister Modi G is doing um, in this country, but if we want this country to be not just the third largest economy in the world, but to be the third largest stock market in the world, we have to make it cleaner and greener because the future generation of men and women, we have the youngest population in this country, in the world, if we can make this cleaner and greener, I think we've lost a lot. And I think that's where I've decided to come back and put my, my energies uh, in the front lines of green energy and sustainability. Brilliant. And I think now we're talking about a really fascinating market, right? You're mentioning India and, of course, there's many other markets you're also targeting. But how are going to make this work, especially in this really cost-sensitive market? I think even in Europe, US, you just mentioned it. Even there, EV adoption is a big issue. It's still too expensive. People don't want to buy EVs yet or not enough, right? Like the numbers are not where people want them to be. So how are you going to make this work in India? And also, how are you going to compete with China? Sure. First of all, um, you know, um, I think you're absolutely right. The total cost ownership model, the TCO model, is something that all of these countries in Asia, in, in Africa, even more, is needed. How are we going to do it? We're actually doing it now. We are now, actually, if you, if you want to know, 54%, maybe even more, of the three-wheelers in this country are electric. You are seeing a serious move in two-wheelers. You're going to see this in e-trucks. You will see commercial uh, passenger vehicles a little bit later. But I will tell you, what we are seeing is with the battery tech, with what's happening in EV technology, motors, powertrains, everything that is going around the space, the three-wheelers and the two-wheelers work. And I think, for example, most of the vehicles in the two-wheelers are under the price of about, you know, in between $1,000 to $1,200. And, and, and um, if, if that's the currency you prefer or euro, I can come in euro. But I would say on the three-wheelers, we are now down to almost less than uh, $4,000. But I'll tell you what it's working. I'll give you an example. I come up with a new vehicle, which is in a passenger called Stream City Quick, which is 15 minute fast charging. 15 minute fast charging is giving you possibly 400 kilometers a day in 15 minute charge, right? That is giving a driver about six and a half to eight and a half thousand kilometers a month to drive. That person is making significant value for himself after paying the uh, EMI on the vehicle and financing charges and the maintenance and the fuel, which is the charging infra. 
So we are working on multiple technologies on fixed, fast charging swap, aligning forces with people in the US, Europe, uh, Japan, Korea. Um, I haven't done many alliances with China because you can understand there's a bit of a tension, but I'll tell you what, I think today on the two and the three wheelers, we can compete with the Chinese on the prices and the quality. Um, India is the largest three wheeler market, it's the largest exporter of three wheelers. Even in two wheeler market, we have one of the largest markets in the world. And if you look at Indian uh, manufacturing, in the ice are exporting to Africa, to Latin America, to all over the world. And you're going to see the same on EVs. I'm probably associated to say I'm setting up an African unit to set up and to build green energy sustainability to Africa. Um, I think overall, I think in terms of two and three, we're able to compete with the Chinese. But I also say the world is big enough. India is big enough. And I think um, I think overall, with, the, with, with what we have here in India in terms of technology, in terms of players, I think we are definitely on the path. I'm never going to say we are at the level of the Chinese, but there's always the market is big enough for a player A, B, C, D. You know, for example, BMW and Mercedes was there. Tesla came from behind. The Chinese today, absolutely, you hit the point in that EV business have the top five. But India is a very price sensitive market. It is a very culturally different market. For a person, for me, I'm even a foreigner in this country. In, in all of these states, in the South and the North, in the West and the East, every customer is different. And we at OSM are working on custom tailoring vehicles in volume for those regions. So in England, we say different horses for different courses. And I think OSM has been doing that. But I will say the ecosystem that's being built, the government is also very supportive, but it is never going to be to the level of United States or Europe. But you are seeing a significant amount of move. And if you go around the cities of India, the number of green plates that you see uh, much, much. I just came back from Iceland, Norway, and, and Sweden. I was there last week. And I'll tell you what, I can see this country continually moving, not just on EVs, on EV and alternate energy in hydrogen in the future. We have got a government who is very much understands that if we don't move towards green energy and sustainability, we have a huge problem in this nation. 31 of the most polluted cities in the world is in our country, and we have to make a change. And as I said in the, C in the CEO uh, you know, roundtable, we owe it to the future generations. We owe it to our Nari Shakti. Nari Shakti means women power, which is 48% of this population, to make this effort. And I think, I think the leadership, the politicians, the businessmen, the bureaucracy, everybody understands and I'll tell you, private citizens understand that if we want to make India where we want to take it, we all have to put our two cents in to the pot. I really appreciate it. And I think it's definitely a shift we can see, right? I think on, on the awareness. Um, one topic you mentioned a lot of commercial, right? Like which is where I think people are more used to total cost of ownership in a commercial space. I think individuals maybe don't think this way as much. Um, so maybe kind of from, from your perspective of, because we spoke a lot about how the price came down significantly, especially also in China, but also overall, right, the, the, the battery costs. So we see, you know, $60 per kilowatt hour and things like that. Um, where do you think we have to go to kind of make this also on the personal side be attractive? And maybe the second question there also, do we need cells produced in India or can you keep importing? See, it's a very, contra I'll, I'll answer the second, very good question. I'll answer the second question first and then I'll come to the first. Look, I think that we need to use our resources. I said before in the CEO uh, round table, we don't need to reinvent the wheel. Okay, build the market, build, put in England, in America, we say boots on the ground. Let's put vehicles on the ground. If there's enough, let me ask you this. You're gonna build cell manufacturing and the demand is not there. What's the point? Then you're gonna export it out. I don't think in that game, you're gonna compete with anybody, specifically the Chinese, right? Their cost is already down. They put the infrastructure cost. They get government support, which is sort of intangible. You cannot see, um, you know, and I don't think we can afford European cost or the US cost, right? So my point is, I think we should continue. Um, one of my colleagues, uh, Vivek San, was in the CXO conference, was talking about it. Let's make sure, let's get the 80% done, and then we can build the 20%. I think it has to be in a mix and match. I think that overall, that we can still get cells from outside, but I think there has to be an investment, which is gonna be a longer term investment, which is gonna be something that will 
take, which, which I would call patient money, because I was, I was a hedge fund manager, which is not fast money, as I said, which will take a 10 to 15 year vision and will take a lower rate of return. And that can be done. As I said, Amaraja with Goshen has done that. But I will say the PLI scheme, it's a very controversial statement I'm saying. We talked about it. So many people signed up for it. Can I tell you how many in three years or four years of those people have built? You know why? Because it doesn't work. The economics don't sit. So I'm not, I'm, I'm talking about the elephant in the room, but you know, everybody's saying. So my answer to your question is, I think there will come a time. I think what we need to focus right now is build the EV ecosystem, build the charging infra, build the complete ecosystem of, ba of, of powertrains, motors, and it's been happening. The Indians have realized, and it's not just the Indians, you have seen, um, you know, you have seen the, the big players in India. When we started this journey eight, nine years ago, none of these big boys and girls were in the game. Now all of them are in here. And they realize that this is the need of the hour. So my answer to you is that the cell manufacturing can come a bit later, but the rest of the things that one of my colleagues had just spoken at the CSO, um, you know, the CEO round table, is extremely, that let's build that 80% and then come back to cell. While we're doing this, some of the ventures in cell manufacturing can happen. Alliances with foreign partners is gonna be key. I'll be honest with you, Mahindra is aligning with Volkswagen. Did you ever, ever hear of this 10 years ago? No, so everybody has to do this. And I think in cell manufacturing, if we can align forces with players that have the experience, that know making cells is not a kid's play, right? I, I, I have had, connect, I, I know the CATL guys, I know the BYD guys. Look, in China, there's all types of cell players, but I think they're always looking for an extra market. So if we can build alliance and make in India, we can get that experience, we can get that knowledge, we can work with them and then build future technologies. I think cells have become commoditized. So focus on something that gives you that extra oomph. For example, AI today is valued more than what you know, traditional uh, players were doing. So I think if India can focus on new technologies, new development, and leave a commoditization product, right, where the, where the returns are not so great, I, I think I am not, I, I believe that if it's made in India with an alliance, I'm good with it. Right? And if it makes this ecosystem build faster, which is needed, there is no shadow of a doubt, the health concerns, the, the future generation effects is much, much bigger than the amount of money we're talking about invested in this space. And I think that that's where I think uh, we should be there. So I think it's a, a different horses for different courses. We will see some of the bigger players do this, align with, at the end, I'm, I'm okay to align with the Koreans or the Japanese, and, and people have aligned with the Chinese too. I don't mind. Um, you know, I think as long as it brings scale, I'm okay with that. The first question was um, passenger. The passenger market, 100% is gonna go there. But at the moment, we have to find solutions. What kind of solutions? Battery as a service. We can be leasing, right? There are multiple areas, um, as we say in England, skin the cat, right? Uh, it's, a, no, it's a vegetarian country, so don't take me the wrong way. But what I'm saying is, how do you find a solution? You find a solution by bringing your total cost ownership down, by bringing your lease payments down, and by bringing enough charging infrastructure, not just in tier one, two, one city. You gotta go to tier two, three, four. I cannot tell you, I go through the length and breadth of this country, in the south, in the north, in the east, in the west, and the movement behind this is continuous. And I think in the next five to seven years, you will see a significant move. This is a marathon, not a sprint. India is a long-term play. I keep telling to all of my European and American investors, you wanna be here, I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. You see our friends from Korea, Hyundai, they are gonna do a 25,000 crore IPO. They're gonna value the Indian company at $18 billion. Now tell me, how many American and European companies have had that long-term vision? India will make you a, shit, a big, big amount of money. Right, sorry about that. Make you a, a huge amount of money. You will have, I mean, Walmart bought Flipkart and over 10 years made a significant. So I keep saying to all the investors abroad, including the way I work, is that this is a marathon, invest long-term, you're gonna make a serious amount of money. Appreciate it. I know we don't have much time left, so I just wanna, one aspect there, right? So I think you mentioned, I mean, one we definitely see, right? The move and this training and all of these people coming to the space, Battery and Bay and all of these things, but, I think one interesting aspect I found is one, you just got back from Norway, 
and that's a country where we now have more EVs than ICE. So do you have any thought on when we're going to have this in India? One, when there are going to be more EVs than ICEs on the, uh, on the roads? And the second thing is, like, by being in this market, we have a lot of listeners from around the world, but also people very curious, for example, about the Indian market. By your journey, what has been maybe some of the biggest lessons? And maybe what's kind of the biggest change you would happen, like to happen, be it in policy, regulation, topics like that in the industry? All right. I just, I just, as I said, uh, I, 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 you know, one of the countries that I recommend everybody to go is Iceland. It's honestly heaven on, heaven on earth, right? I mean, um, it's something that gives you a different energy, right? We were testing vehicles up there in absolutely minus 20 conditions. I was on, we were testing on maybe closer to Arctic glaciers and stuff. Um, I'll tell you what, I have, I, I'm a big Martin Luther King fan. I study in the United States. Um, you know, I have a dream. I have a dream and I can always love to dream. I think in the next five to seven years, you will see ice overtake, uh, electric overtake ice. I think that's, the trend is towards that. In the commercial, 100% it's gonna go there. I think because the TCO model was. I think with where battery tech is going, with what is, um, you know, with, with what is going on in terms of, um, you know, our economic development, I think you'll see it. But I think the, the, the two and the three wheelers are already going to get there in the next three years. But I would tell you, on the commercial four wheelers, I think in the next five to seven years, you will see it go electric. And other, you know, if you talk to Toyota, they talk about hybrid, right? Everybody has their own. But I'll tell you, anything that makes it cleaner and greener, we will go there. Um, I'll tell you what, over the last... Over the last few years, my biggest experience and my biggest lesson has been in India, it's a marathon. Think long term, build alliances. I tell you, this market values long term players. The equity market will value your long term vision. But I will always say, all of your, um, I would say, all of your listeners come here. This is a market, I'm telling you, not because I'm in India. I'm just as European or American as you are. Um, this is a market, if you take a long-term vision, the market, the people, because, you know, it has that dynamics to make you significant money. I will also say, align with players here. If you have technology, if you have experience, come and build alliances here. I've done it in Korea, I've done it in Japan, I'm doing it in Europeans, I'm doing it with the Americans. I will tell you, I have found the Europeans and Europeans more open. I, I see the Americans come and go, come and go, right? The Japanese and the Koreans, they understand this market. Maruti Suzuki controls majority of the passenger market. Why? They take a long-term vision, they took at pricing, they look at quality, and they make the system work. My experiences are the same, and I will say, but align with the right partner and align with everybody that is gonna make this country greener, cleaner. Thank you very much. They say Jai Hind, Jai Bharat. I hope all of you got enough interest in listening to this. Anytime you guys wanna have a question, please reach out to me. Much, much appreciated. Yeah, thank you all for listening for the Battery Insiders podcast. Please subscribe if you want to hear more of these great insights. But for today, I really want to thank Udena Rang for your time and your insights with us. Thank you very much. Thank you.